So I think we've all been there. We've finished a game and thought, damn, that might be my game of the year. Maybe even my favorite game of all time. Now, what if I told you, you could completely forget you ever played or even platinum that game? What would it be? Well, that's the goal of today's video. I'm going to tell you 10 of mine. So let me know some of yours down in the comments. I'd love to see them. I might end up even checking them out. So let's begin. Starting off with one of my all time favorite games on the PS3, The Last of Us. A game that's been re-released like three times now, I think. I've platinumed it on the PS3 and the PS5. In this game, you follow Joel and Ellie's journey through the game that basically had me hooked right from the start all the way up until the finish. Taking around 60 hours to platinum, you'll have to finish the game not only once, but again in New Game Plus in Survivor difficulty. And if you're playing the PS3 or the PS4 version, You'll also have a bunch of online trophies, which normally I'm against and absolutely hate them. But I would be lying if I said I didn't absolutely love the incredibly underrated multiplayer. So yeah, the, the factions multiplayer mode absolutely kicks ass, which kind of brings me on to something that kind of sucks, which is you might have heard that the, the multiplayer like standalone Last of Us game got cancelled which is a massive shame because I could only imagine how good that would have been with how good it just were in the original game. In the original game I felt like the factions mode was just kind of a throwaway mode but it was so good. So if they was to like put all of the effort into a standalone multiplayer thing I honestly think it could have been insanely good. But yeah unfortunately they ended up uh, cancelling that. Maybe we'll get it in the future. I don't know. But back on topic the Platinum. The only real downside I guess you could say for getting the Platinum in The Last of Us is the, the amount of collectibles. There is quite a lot of collectibles and one of them that was quite, it was fun but annoying at the same time because it was easily missable, was the Ellie jokes. The jokes themselves were actually pretty funny and did have me chuckle in a few times but the fact that you can so easily just walk past one and, and totally miss it or not walk into the right place where the joke takes place made it yeah super easy to miss but damn was that game freaking amazing so this next one kind of surprised me if i'm being honest when i first saw resident evil 7 and it being in first person after you know all of them being in third person i have to admit i was very unsure very skeptical I, I knew it would end up being a great horror game because, you know, I mean, Capcom are just amazing. The, the Resident Evil team are amazing at making horror games. So I knew it would be a good horror game. But would it be a good Resident Evil game is what I wondered. But all of my skepticism was put aside when I finally played it because holy shit was Resident Evil 7 an absolutely amazing game. And more importantly, an amazing Resident Evil game. Exploring the, the Baker house, the Baker's mansion, I guess you could call it, was absolutely amazing. The place was creepy and it gave me Spencer Mansion vibes all over again, just like in the first Resident Evil. But then you also have the Baker family themselves. And every single one of these guys are amazing in their own way. You've got Jack Baker, the dad, who has this kind of like Mr. X nemesis vibe to him. He just stalks you everywhere you go. He's just following you. He smashes through freaking walls. He chases you down. He chops your freaking leg off at one point. Well, I get your foot, I suppose. And not only that, he has like a, like a, a comedy side to him as well. He, he throws in a few jokes. But well, even with the jokes, he's terrifying. But he's probably not as terrifying as... Marguerite, she is horrifying, bro. You don't want to mess with her. She screams at you, she stalks you, and then she transforms into something even creepier for a boss fight that is insane. And she also probably has the best jump scare I've ever experienced. You've then got Lucas, the son, who, you know, clearly has watched one too many Saw films. And then lastly, you've got Zoe, who is the daughter. She kind of like guides you around the mansion, updates you on where to go, 
what you should be doing. And honestly, just overall, the story is just amazing. The setting's amazing and the trophies are amazing. One trophy has you beating the game on the Madhouse difficulty, which is the hardest mode in the game. Then you've got beating the game without opening the item box using less than three first aid sprays. And then another great one is uh, you have to speed run the game. I think it was under four hours, which sounds like you'd never be able to do it but once you know where you're going it's actually not too bad i feel like resident evil games even though you have to do multiple playthroughs i normally i'm kind of like oh god multiple playthroughs this is so like boring i'm gonna have to play through the whole thing again usually you can't skip cutscenes. it's just like oh my god but resident evil i might be a bit biased because i absolutely i love resident evil but i honestly feel like resident evil is one of the best games at doing like, at just making you actually want to do more playthroughs because stuff changes, it's, it's perfect for speed running. You unlock like stronger weapons so you can get through it faster. And then obviously, just as I mentioned, these trophies, the trophies just make you play completely different on new playthroughs. And then to up the horror and the anti even more for me personally, when I very first played through this game, I did my playthrough in VR and holy shit, it was by far the scariest game I have ever played. Hell, it's scarier than any film I've ever watched. It's scarier than anything I've ever done. And that might sound ridiculous, but if you have never played Resident Evil 7 and you play it for the first time in VR, I guarantee you, you will be shitting your pants the whole way through it, bro. And it's so fucking amazing. And still to this day, the best VR game I've ever played. Next up is another one of my all time favorite games. You might have noticed a pattern here, but this one is Borderlands 2. I could have easily put any of the Borderlands games on here because they're basically all amazing. Even 3 being the worst one is still a, a really good game. I, I just love the formula that Borderlands is. But oh my, when this game released, I was so hyped. I was so excited for it just because Borderlands uh, 1. I don't think I played Borderlands 1 at release, at least not that I remember. But when I did finally play it, I was absolutely hooked from the get go. So as soon as I heard about 2 coming out, bro was buzzing so when the first one come out it was a game that i played and i had not really played anything quite like it and then exactly the same for the second game as well because it improved on almost everything of the first game and although it sounds the formula for borderlands sounds quite obvious now when it first come out a first person shooter with uh, RPG elements wasn't really that common back when this one came out. Yeah, like I say, the first one and the second one had me hooked from the moment I started playing. Who remembers, if you played Borderlands, do you remember the absolutely epic intro to Borderlands 1 and 2? I probably prefer Borderlands 1's intro, but oh my, those intros, if you haven't seen them, just go have a look on YouTube and watch them because they are badass. It might even just be one of my favorite intros ever. Up there with uh, like the intro to Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. The intro to that was insane. The intro to like SSX Tricky. That one was amazing, mostly because of the song though. Anyway, back on topic, the, the gameplay is absolutely peak with a great cast of characters such as uh, Handsome Jack, hilarious uh, main enemy. Then you've got the funny, sometimes annoying, Claptrap, Tiny Tina, who's just loud and loves explosions. And then, of course, the absolute legend, Scooter. He's unfortunately uh, not in the games after three, but absolutely love the guy. As for the Platinum, you'll have to reach the max level of fifty, finish every single side quest, visit every single location, tip 10 grand to Moxa. And then, of course, the most important one, give Claptrap a high five. Doing all this though will take you about 60 hours to Platinum. This next game absolutely blew me away when I played this. So both on the PS2 and the remaster on the PS4, one of the most unique and most like breathtaking games I've ever played. Even to this day, it's still incredible. The game I'm talking about is Shadow of the Colossus. The story and the gameplay are 
pretty straightforward. There's nothing too crazy going on there. You'll take control of a boy called Wanda, who is basically trying to save this girl. And he is kind of heard that bringing her to this forbidden land can somehow resurrect her. And that's the core of the story. There's not really too much other than that until you get to the end, which I, of course, won't talk about because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't played it. As I mentioned, for the gameplay, you'll be mostly exploring the Forbidden Lands on your trusty horse, Agro, who you will be screaming his name every two seconds, in which you'll have to ride and uh, find and defeat all of the Colossi. These are huge monsters that you have to first climb and it's a bit of a puzzle because you have to figure out how to climb them. And some of them you can't straight away climb. You have to figure little things out. When I played this on PS2, first like encountering these colossi was absolutely insane. And still to this day is probably one of my greatest gaming moments is finding these colossi. So to platinum this one, you're probably going to have to set aside about 40 hours because you're going to have to beat the game on hard and in under 5 hours and 41 minutes. I'm not sure why it's so specific with that time, but you'll also have to max out your stamina and health and also finish the game without dying, which sounds super, super difficult. But if you just go into a new game, knowing exactly how to tackle the Colossi and having a lot of health and you can unlock uh, special weapons and stuff so you can take Colossi out in like one or two hits makes it a lot easier so it's not quite as daunting as it sounds it's kind of like the resident evil games with sometimes you look at the resident evil trophy list and you think oh my god this is going to be like the hardest game ever to platinum but then you realize oh you could just use like unlimited rocket launcher or something on a playthrough and you're like oh okay this isn't actually that difficult there's also this massive tower that you've got to climb and the only way to climb it is to get maximum stamina it's an absolutely amazing climb and then you've got this long bridge to go across uh and it's just a whole experience it's so much fun and i, I honestly can't say enough good things about this game it's obviously not for everyone but uh i definitely suggest at least giving it a try because it could blow you away like it did for me and if possible go in completely blind and just enjoy the experience so this next one I'm going to discuss, it didn't really receive the best reaction at launch, but I personally couldn't get enough of it. It did have a couple of issues at the start. If you're a regular, you'll know I absolutely love me some zombies and this game ticked so many boxes for me. Hundreds of zombies on screen, check, open world, check, RPG elements, check. And something I didn't even know I wanted was a bike that legitimately by a couple of hours into the game, especially towards the middle, feels like your own bike. You love this bike. You need this bike. You absolutely love the feeling of upgrading the bike, which the upgrading of the bike is is great as well you can upgrade everything from like the handlebars to the wheels you can also changing the wheels makes it better on dirt or you can upgrade the fuel tank so you, you run out of fuel less often which that does play a factor into the game you do have to refuel because if you run out well you're pushing your bike along i'm of course talking about the incredible days gone you take control of deacon who is a former biker and uh, you go along with your brother, Boozer. It's a game that mostly starts out about survival, but that quickly escalates as you progress through the story and it becomes a lot more uh, interesting, a lot more serious. And of course, the highlight of this game is the absolutely bonkers hordes that, of zombies that you come across. The hordes, there are a certain amount of enemies, so they don't respawn like infinitely. It's just, let's just say there's a horde roaming down the road and it's there's like 2,000 of them. You have to take out all 2,000 of them to get rid of that horde. And it's just so much fun. And then some of the bigger hordes, they kind of almost become a bit of a puzzle. The way you have to actually take them out, you have to take like roots around certain buildings so you could, don't get trapped. And it's just really freaking good. But this one, the platinum clocks in at around 60 hours, give or take and it'll have you completing all of the side content, side missions. Uh, you'll have to take out all of the hordes. There's also quite a few collectibles. And then there's these infestations as well, which I absolutely loved is you, you kind of have like zombie nests and you have to throw molotovs in to, 
to like burn them out. You'll also need to earn the trust of different camps and uh, of course maxing out Deacon's stats. I'd say the biggest disappointment about this game is that for whatever reason Sony decided to cancel the sequel. Like Sony what are you doing? Sony, PlayStation, whoever made that call, it's the wrong call. Go back and uh, let's just get Days Gone 2, please. Okay, so this next one. This next one is what, it, in my opinion, the best Souls game. And somehow it still doesn't have a remaster. It still doesn't have a remake. And it's an absolute masterpiece. You might know what game I'm talking about. It's of course Bloodborne. It's honestly right up there with the best of the best Sony exclusives like The God of Wars, The, the Last of Us. It, it holds a candle to any of those games. And honestly, I could probably talk about this game for hours, but I won't, don't worry. I guess the first thing I can say is from what I remember, the two biggest negatives, like, well, probably the only two negatives about the game that I can think of personally is because it didn't get a remaster or anything, it's only 30 FPS and the loading times are a bit too long. They are literally the only two things wrong with this game. So basically, if they remastered this game, if they ba barely even touched the game, just made the loading times better because it's on PS5 with a 60 FPS mode, well, that, that's all they would need to do, honestly. Just do that. People would absolutely love it. As for the setting, it's dark, it's grim, it's dire, it's... Some of the bosses are terrifying, but I absolutely love it. And it even still looks pretty freaking good, even today. The combat, it's amazing, uh, it's fluid, it's brutal. The weapons are brilliantly designed, as are ev is basically every single boss in the game, with... Every single time you defeat one of these guys, it leaves a lasting impression on you like, wow, that was such a badass boss. I don't think there's any bosses where you beat them and you're just like, oh, that was kind of shit. They're all so freaking well done. Honestly, it's it's one of those games, I'd, you probably have had those games before yourself, but it's one of those games where when you stop playing it, you're thinking about it and you're thinking about the next time you can go and play it again. It's one of those games, there's not many games where for me personally, where like I stopped playing it and I'm still thinking about it and I just cannot wait to go play more. This is one of those games. Like even, even just the level design in general is so well done. There's so, so many different environments and they all meld really well together. They're f super fun to explore. So I think I think I've said enough good things about this, uh, this game. So, so what do you need to do for the Platinum? Well, since it's a Souls-like, it's of course not going to be an easy one. I think it was rated like an 8 out of 10 for difficulty, uh, which I would probably agree with. But it's also not the hardest from soft game, in my opinion. It'll take probably 50-ish hours to platinum. But as with any Souls game, it's very, it's like highly skill dependent. If you're absolutely amazing at Souls games, you could maybe cut that down to like 35, 40. If you're really bad at these kind of games, then, you know, it might go up to 60, 70. So it's one of those that, you know, it's kind of all over the place. For the Platinum, though, you, of course, you're going to have to beat every single boss, including the optional ones, get all of the endings, find all of the weapons, fully upgrade it and complete the Chalice Dungeons. Honestly, if you somehow haven't played this game and enjoy Souls likes, I mean, what are you even doing? Go download it right this moment and fall in love with it just like I did. All right champs, who remembers? There's gotta be someone watching this video who remembers playing Battlefield 4 on the PS4 for the first time. Like, holy shit. Before this, we of course had the PS3 and the PS3 versions of Battlefield games were always way, way worse than the PC versions. I still love them. Bad Company 2 is still probably one of my favorite Battlefield games. But there's no denying that the scale and that Battlefield feel just wasn't quite there on consoles until we got the PS4 version of Battlefield 4. It honestly just like straight up changed Battlefield forever when it comes to consoles. And I mean, we're not going to really talk about Battlefield 2042 because that game is, you know, it's a bit shit. So we'll, we'll kind of push that one aside. The rest of them are, are pretty good though. But we got the huge battles in the PS4 version, the tanks, jeeps, choppers, jets, the amazing gunplay, the graphics, the evolution, 
And honestly, outside of COD 4, this was probably the game I've spent the most time playing any single game. Fortunately for you though, you don't have to spend that much time if you just want to go for the Platinum, since it'll probably only take about 40 hours. For that, you'll have to beat the story on the hard difficulty, which isn't really that difficult to be honest. And then a decent chunk of that time will actually come from the multiplayer because you'll have to get to level 25. Uh, that's actually not that high of a level. To be fair, in these days, if you was to do it, there's probably like double XP or triple XP or something crazy. So you'd probably get there in no time. But let me know down in the comments, did any of you remember jumping like from the PS3 version of Battlefield to that PS4 version? I mean, I remember Battlefield 4 was a little bit glitchy at launch. Uh, so outside of the, the a few of the issues and the glitches there, like just the the overhaul of the whole game was was bonkers honestly though battlefield 3 and bad company are goated as well so for this next one i'm gonna have to try and take you back to 2008 when uh, bioshock released when i played this in 2009 so i was a little bit late to the party with this one i had no idea what this game was i just saw it on a shelf in a game shop and it looked interesting. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll check this out. I didn't really look too much into it. It was just, yep, yeah, I'll try that. And wow, was I blown a freaking way from basically just the intro of the game. One second, um, I'm on a plane. We're flying over the sea. And two seconds later, it crashes in the middle of the ocean. Somehow we survived. We start swimming. And as we get to the surface, there's this giant lighthouse just in front of us and like oh shit okay let's go check that out there's nothing else around here you go in there you enter it you see this this thing that you can enter in the middle it's just a giant lift that takes you deep down into the ocean and you end up in rapture and it's just like holy shit you're just like what the fuck is this game bro with me not really knowing what the hell was going on it's it's kind of hard now because everyone kind of knows what bioshock is but not knowing what this game was and, and being introduced to rapture for the first time was just absolutely crazy it just instantly claws you gets its claws in you and it's just like keep playing because you want to know what the hell is going on and of course you can have cool intros but that doesn't mean anything if you don't have you know an absolutely amazing story surrounding rapture and of course you know all the different gameplay mechanics the little sisters of course the big daddies it's just an overall amazing game and still to this day is one of the most intriguing locations in gaming and if you somehow haven't been spoiled on the story of Bioshock, yeah, I mean, you're in for one hell of a treat if you do go play it. So to platinum this one, you'll have to research most of the enemies with a camera, complete the game on hard without Vita chambers. Those are basically like checkpoints. And also on the survivor difficulty, which is the hardest mode, it's not too bad though, since on the survivor difficulty, you can use the Vita chambers or Vita chambers however you want to pronounce that one. This one will only take you like 15 to 20 hours. So it's a pretty short one. You can get it in one playthrough, assuming you don't miss anything. I personally though, just recommend doing two. Just do your first playthrough and just play the game. Love the game. Play it exactly how you want to play it. And then you can just kind of, you know, do everything afterwards on the second playthrough. But yeah, Bioshock, go play it if you haven't. So when I was younger, I couldn't have both consoles i think most of us growing up as kids your mum your dad wouldn't buy you both of the consoles these days three consoles you usually if you're lucky get one for me when i was super young it was the sega mega drive but you could of course play the nes and then later it was playstation or xbox i was a playstation kid as you might imagine but when the 360 came out it did have some really freaking cool looking games that i really wanted to play there was dead rising basically the reason that i bought an xbox 360 i saved up my money i was like I, w I need this console for this one game let me tell you i was not disappointed one of my all-time favorite games ever but that's not the game we're discussing there was also left for dead that was amazing not the game i'm discussing but there was another one and it was called saint row and unfortunately playstation never to this day i don't think has ever had the first saint row game we did get saint row 2 but unfortunately that came out before trophies were a thing yep that was actually a thing at some point 
PS3 didn't have trophies at the start, which is it's kind of crazy to think about now because they're such a big part of my gaming, like everyday gaming life now. But yeah, it's, uh, one point on the PS3, yeah, there, there were none. So as much as I would love to include that one, I can't. So I'm going to include the next one, which was Saints Row the Third, which was, was also a really, really good Saints Row game. A game that I platinumed on the PS3, the PS4 and the PS5. It'll take about 30 hours and requires you to take over every district, complete all of the challenges, the side missions, and a bunch of other crazy little things here and there as well. Honestly, if I could sum up Saints Row in one word, it would just be fun. It's just a fun game. And then especially like the third one and the fourth one, it's just all about the fun. It's so ridiculous and they're just have fun messing around in this open world. And the story is the same. It starts off quite like generic in Saints Row 1, very like by the numbers, you know where it's going, you know what it's trying to do. And as the games go, it just gets more and more ridiculous, as pretty much does the gameplay and the characters as well. Great. Plus one of the greatest like side missions, side jobs in any game ever, insurance fraud. Let me know in the comments if, if you feel the same. That minigame is so much goddamn fun. Just get run over and go flying across the goddamn screen. Watching the, the money tick. It's so good, bro. It reminds me of Burnout, the, the crash mode, which was absolutely amazing as well. Maybe I just like causing destruction. I don't know. And I don't want to hear about the Saints Row reboot because that thing doesn't count. It's not even a Saints Row game. Uh, we're just going to forget about that one because that shit's depressing. And last... But certainly not least, you guessed it, another one of my favorite games of all time, Fallout New Vegas. Now, don't get me wrong, Fallout 3 is absolutely amazing and probably has some of the best DLC ever. But New Vegas, that shit was my jam. At the time, after playing 3 and all of its DLC, I didn't think they would be able to top that game. And then New Vegas came out and I was just like, holy shit, this is pretty much everything fallout 3 is but better bigger more improved more refined more choice uh less glitches it was just so freaking good you could literally just play this game however the hell you want to play it you want to just shoot everyone and be an absolute arsehole you do that shoot everyone if you want to be a good guy and help everyone okay you can do that too even just try and talk your way out of every situation that's probably possible too i'm sure it is the game's also got multiple factions that you can uh, side with or side against each one bringing different endings and unique missions and stuff which brings me perfectly onto the trophies you can save the game before taking sides with any of the factions so you don't have to do a complete new playthrough you can just kind of lower that save and pick a different team so you can do that if you kind of want to save a little bit of time on the platinum you'll also need to do another playthrough anyway on hardcore you'll also need to reach level 30 recruit all of the companions use a whole variety of weapons and hack a bunch of terminals you'll also have to pickpocket some people and take a gamble at Vegas because, I mean, what would Fallout New Vegas be without a little bit of gambling, you know? You can even rack up a, a bill, a bounty, and have people chasing you down for it. As for the amount of time this one takes, it'll probably take around 80 hours. But trust me when I say this, that 80 hours will be well spent. And that's all 10 games. What did you think of my list? Should I make a part two? I actually already have many more games in mind just going through this list i can already think of plenty more so let me know if you'd want to see a part two um, let me know in the comments some of your games that you wish you could totally forget about and redo the platinum but with that thanks for watching i've been mr leaning versus subscribe for more and i'll catch you all on the next video